song I requested, so good. It's good. You guys are right at crotch level, finally. It's a good start. It's just so awkward. That's good. I, uh, I'm single, sir. Um, and what? You guys brought it there. I, uh, <laughs> I'm single. Hey, it's weird. It's hard. It's weird. I'm, I'm super scared of being single. I don't want to be single. I don't want to be single because it, it's scary out there now. I'm super scared of herpes, quite honestly. I'm, ex I'm terrified of getting herpes. It's something like, like three out of every two people have herpes. It's like way higher than where I need it to be at, whatever the number is. I'm just terrified of it. And although it's harder to be single if you're a guy, I think, than a woman. A lot harder. Because women, you're just as, you, you, you're just as, as, as horny as we are. You are, I've learned that, but you have to be turned on first. And then after you're horny. Turned on and then. Turned on and then. I'm ready for this right now. Like I'm always ready and it is exhausting. It is just exhausting. I can't wait till I'm 90 and all I care about is peanuts. Just go to the store and get them. They're salty and delicious. I don't have to about worry about when I'm going to get peanuts again. They're at the store. You know? It's harder if you're a guy. Because we don't know when we're going to get laid next. We have no idea. Like, I might never get laid again. I might never get... I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, I probably, I probably will. I mean, look at this jawline. Uh, you know? Just majestic. Majestic, I think. Let's be honest with ourselves. You know? You know? But I might, I might not, you know, you know, it, it, I, I might not, you know, we don't, we don't get to choose. We don't get to choose. We start doing weird stuff if we haven't got laid in a while. We start getting really weird. It, it messes with our heads. Like I live in Toronto now. I'll get off the subway and then a hawker will get on. I'll just get back on. Like I don't even know the subway system that well. I mean, that cavalier with my day, you know, start getting real weird because we don't get to choose. Ladies get to choose when you get laid next. All you have to do is put on a cleavagey shirt and then walk outside. <laughs> Someone's gonna have you. Someone's gonna take that down by the end of the day. Somebody, somebody, yeah. Yeah. somebody, sure. Yeah. We don't get to choose. Guys don't get to choose. Well, some guys get to choose, you know, but they're rapists. So that is wrong. That is wrong, guys, okay? We all learned something here today. It's an important lesson. I think. And I'm, uh, I, I'm not a prostitute guy either. I can't solve that problem like that. I'm not a prostitute guy, you know, because of the herpes thing, you know? You know, I mean, some, here, ladies, you don't know this, male culture is divided into two camps, prostitute guys and non-prostitute guys. And every prostitute guy thinks that every other guy is also a prostitute guy. They don't even check first. They just walk up to you and start talking shop, you know? <laughs> Like this one guy was like, you should go over there. You can uh, have sex with a woman in a cardboard box for $40. <laughs> like this is, this is the weirdest cab ride I've ever been on. I don't think we know each other that well to have this talk. So weird. This one guy came up to me and he goes, he goes, hey bro, you should go to Cuba. It's awesome. Cheap women, cheap beers, both. Four dollars. I was like, ugh. That's not even that cheap a beer. And I don't know what the going rate is to put a piece of your body inside somebody else's body, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you want to pay at least double digits, right? 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 Like if I was in, you know, Cuba and some lady jumped out of an alleyway and was like, ah, you want this, huh? Huh? Do you this, huh? Four dollars. I'm just gonna give you 11. It's, it's just not the type of transaction I feel comfortable getting a bargain on, quite frankly. <laughs> I love how you just shake your head like, no. $13. We're ripping off. We're 16. Oh, ooh. <laughs> it's a fun job. It's a great job. I get to travel this country. It's a beautiful country. I do do this 
And uh, now, now that I moved to Toronto, uh, everyone hates me. Uh, so it's weird. I didn't know that. But if you, if you, if everyone just hates Toronto. It's the only socially acceptable city in this country to hate. Like if you hate Montreal, you're a racist. And if you hate Calgary, you hate oil or money or something. But everyone's like, Toronto sucks. Like I was in Vancouver. They hate it there. You know, I, I have this joke where I, I start by saying I'm from Toronto. It's just like, it's just, it, it's just a setup to the funny part. Before I get to the funny part, I would always go, boo! Screw Toronto! Screw it! <laughs> like, have you guys ever been? They're like, no, but screw it! <laughs> oh, well, what's so good about Vancouver? And they always say the same thing in Vancouver. They're always like, well, Vancouver's the best city in the world because we have majestic mountains on one side to go hiking in and a beautiful ocean to go swimming in. Best ocean. I'm like, oh, okay. None of those things are city things. Just name a bunch of stuff beside your city. You just told me I have to leave your city to have fun. Right? Get over yourself. That'd be the same as me going like, hey Dave, how's your girlfriend? Oh, she's the best girlfriend. She's better than your girlfriend. All right, take it easy, Dave. What's so good about her? Well, she's got a great brother. Great sister. Oh, well, how's her personality? She cries a lot. She cries for 10 months of the year straight. We only take pictures in the two months when she's not crying. Pretend that's what it's like all year round. You know? And they're like, well, well, it's, uh, it, it, it's the best, even besides the rain, because it's the only city in the world where you can go snowboarding, surfing, same day. Skiing, water skiing, same day. I'm like, that's probably true, but no one's ever done that once. I guarantee it, that's never happened one time. That is, a, that is a long, tiring day. And you're gonna get a cold, no matter what the order is. Those two things, you're just asking for a cold, quite frankly. Right. I, I went, I went and, then, and then they're like, you should, I was like, what is there to do during the day? Because you know, I work at night doing this. And they're like, well, you should go check out uh, Wreck Beach, our nude beach. You should go check out the nude beach. And I was like, okay, I'd never been to a nude beach. Uh, and let me tell you something, I learned this. You cannot have a good nude beach in your city if it's always fall in that city. Yeah. First guy I saw was wearing a sweater and no pants. I was like, what are we doing here, sir? You just look like a forgetful guy at this point. You're cold, I can clearly see that you're cold. You're missing the rest of your outfit. I don't know what it is about the male psyche, uh, but when, like, it's all old balls. That is what a nude beach is, just all old balls. As far as the eye can see, just used balls. I don't know what my old man ball quota is to see in a day, but I was way over that quota that day. I was at least 13 balls over, if I had to count. If I had to count. <laughs> the only young in shape people I saw were these two Asian guys with huge penises. Yeah. And I think they're only there to fight racism. <laughs> My name's Graham Kay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.